videos across the web. They would ex be exposed to YouTube, they'd be exposed to our brand, uh, our logo, and there would be features that would draw people back to the site. So that would, really the community, the people were serving as the ones that were marketing the service for us. Um, and I'm always a big believer in trying to build services in that way, building solutions that people, that solve a problem for people, but a, a, a solution that they can share with others. Um, and then, this, in turn, the community can kind of build upon itself. Um, <clears throat> so there's there's a lot of things that happened during that time at YouTube, um, and now at this time, I'm reflecting on a lot of those things and things I would have wanted to do um, after we were acquired by Google. Um, that now I'm applying to new projects. Uh, most recently, we launched Mixbit. Um, it's a video app that's focused on helping people create better content. Uh, with YouTube, I felt that we, we were able to. So with Mixbit, we're looking at what's happening within the space. Uh, there's the Instagrams and the Vines of the world, these short video uh, apps that allow people to capture short experiences. I, I think they, they're great solutions for their platforms, but they're too limiting for people to tell better stories. So with Mixbit, you know, we're focused on shorter clips that people can string together. Um, the, the bigger insight, I guess, with Mixbit is that the cut, smaller cuts within a video makes it interesting. Everyone was looking for a solution like a, a filter that you could place on a photo, when really a cut is what makes a video more entertaining the, uh, for people to consume. And with Mixbit, you can string these shorter clips into longer narratives, longer stories, up to an hour long. But the, the bigger piece that we're trying to accomplish is how do people do that uh, collaboratively, how do people tell stories together? Um, the one thing I observed with social media that it's somewhat isolating. It's empowering for people, uh, and there's many more talents involved. Uh, with YouTube, you're really expected to do everything. You're expected to to act, record, edit, and upload your own video. With Mixbit, we're thinking about ways where you can have multiple people, multiple people acting, uh, recording, and creating structure, dialogue, scripts, storyboards that people can act against. So really. It will hopefully celebrate more the talents uh, that are involved or required for people to tell better stories uh, within the video world. Um, and that's what brings me here today. Uh, you know, kind of that quick journey, I just wanted to kind of go quickly over everything that I've had a chance to experience up until this point. But we're, we continue to work on more ideas with the company I'm involved with, and it's really looking at things that, that we personally find uh, intriguing or interesting. Uh, Hopefully they turn into bigger ideas, but for us it's uh, it's not necessarily the, the outcome. It's, it's about waking up every day being passionate about what you're working on. And um, with YouTube, we were lucky to be in the right place at the right time, where a lot of those things came together. And just really, probably more proud of the fact that the effect that it's had on the world versus the, uh, the exit that we had from it. Um, I think the bigger thing that I get excited about is kind of waking up in the morning and picking up the newspaper, turning on the news to, to see how it's affected the world in some way. And uh, I think there's many more opportunities and ideas out there uh, that can hopefully uh, have the world react and respond in the same way to them. And um, But the biggest, the biggest hurdle for, for everyone is just the fact of taking a chance, taking, going out there to try something. The, the biggest barrier for us was Criticism, I, I think, is probably what everyone deals with, is what will other people think, not only when you get up on stage and talk to, to individuals, but just putting yourself out there. You're, you're creating things that don't exist yet. You're, you're basically just trusting your instincts. You're creating a solution uh, that in your mind makes sense, but you don't know until you actually launch it. Um, and for us, I think that that was the biggest learning experience, is kind of letting all of that go. Just trusting your instincts and, and putting a solution out there and see how people react. And even if it's not successful, especially in the world of, of the internet, it's a, it's easy to adapt. You can learn from how people are using your solution and change what you've originally presented. So I think it makes it easier for people not to necessarily uh, commit to one specific thing. If you have a general idea of where you want to go, get that out and get that out there into the world and. From there, adapt. Really, Silicon Valley is about adapting. Uh, even with PayPal, I got involved with, with that company. We were really approaching from the standpoint of encryption, Palm Pilot application, which led to a payment solution on the web. It was again 
the team there didn't really know too much about payments. We just kind of figured it out along, along the way. And the same with YouTube. We had a, a general idea of what could make video easier, but we didn't really have all the, the answers uh, for the service until we started working on it. So <clears throat> I would suggest, you know, that would probably be the best way to go. I think the, the first presentation that we saw this morning was they really just had some drawings on a, on a whiteboard uh, thinking about how we wanted to start our business and what we'd start working on. Um, <clears throat> So at this time, I'd just like to open it up to any questions. You can have an open dialogue, um, and hopefully I can continue to explain my experience and journey uh, to this point. Anyone have any questions? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for coming at our house today. Uh, and thank you for sharing your journey and uh, the spirit and the positive energy you're bringing with so honestly, as Emirati, we are lucky with the huge support of the government. I think we are in golden period of our history. Uh, I will not talk about the positive things or the the, the support, one. but from your point of view, what, where is our weaknesses? Because actually, two weeks ago, I've been in Silicon Valley. I've seen the, the ecosystem, the integration between the entities, between the, the the big businessmen and the small businesses. So, where do we see or how we can make our ecosystem better? It's my question. So, in terms of, of, of the system here for innovation, better? Yes. Um, well, I think some of the things you touched on earlier with the first discussion is you know, accepting failure to part of the process. VCs, venture capitalists in Silicon Valley go in with mentality out of usually 10 investments, only one will work. Um, so, they continue to bet on these teams and ideas without an, a true idea of everyone being a success, they just continue to invest based on knowing that eventually one will hit, one will create a solution that works. And these teams that continue to try to invent move on to other projects that are working. So even if they've developed a piece of technology that hasn't worked, they, they combine with others to, to hopefully contribute or add to a solution that is working. Um, you know, I, I think once you get that network in place, which takes some time to, to create in Silicon Valley, it's been hard to replicate I mean, anywhere in the world, including the US, uh, for people to create that same ecosystem. They're trying it in New York City and other parts of, of the US, but it, that community takes time to build, and I think uh, it just really needs, requires patience until you get the right amount of, of, of venture capitalists, the right amount of entrepreneurs and engineers to create the solutions when you're talking about internet solutions specifically. But um, yeah, I would, I would just say um, continue to work on building that the infrastructure and in the community. Thank you. Hello. Hi, um, I've got two questions actually. The first one is when you created YouTube back in 05, how do you make sure that the idea is not replicated in another company. I mean, it seems simple. Yes. You know, it's not a little video. How do you make it relevant? Yep. And it continues that way. Um, and the second question is, so now when Google bought YouTube, how, what's, how do you kind of think about the, your next idea? Yep. Yes. Um, well, the first part, you, you can't necessarily approach a, a business or an idea being afraid that other people will reproduce it. Uh, or replicate it, because it will happen, I mean, especially if you're successful. But you need to cr focus on your brand, you need to focus on your community, um, and hopefully focus on, on a solution that's gaining value as, as it grows, that it's harder for, for people to reproduce. So with, with YouTube specifically, uh, we were able to get a few of those solutions right up front that would make it easier for people to get videos into the system. And then we also associated all those videos with our brand, so people would think when they were watching these videos that they, they were coming from YouTube. But once you have that amount of video content, it's hard to replicate that catalog. So when people are thinking about, where do I go to watch video? Well, you're gonna to go to the site that has the most video, which is YouTube. And on the other side, when people are sharing a video, they really want their video to be seen, so they wanna put their video on a site that has the largest audience, which again became YouTube. So. Really, for us, we, we started building these, these natural network effects that would reinforce the service that other competitors couldn't replicate. You couldn't replicate the size of the audience. You couldn't reproduce the catalog. So that's really what allowed YouTube to break away from the pack. Um, 
but yet we, it's, it's hard to, to find solutions that really would have that in place. But again, I would just go back to the fact of just creating a great solution and associating that with a great brand. Um, what I always think about in, in a world of infinite choices, brands matter. Um, and that maybe you know the, the, the design side of me uh, thinking that, but really when people think about services and products they love, they think about the brand. So um, I'd really focus focus on that if you want to differentiate yourself. Um, and then in terms of focusing on new ideas, um, again, I, I really look at things that personally interest me, uh, that excite me, that I think are unique. I don't necessarily want to create solutions that already exist. So a bigger a bigger thing for me is not necessarily looking for like a grand solution or something that is is so different, so unique that it, you know no one in the entire world's ever thought of it before. It's really about unique insights. It's these small insights that hopefully lead to a bigger opportunity. Um, so again with, with YouTube these unique insights on uploading videos and making it seamless was one. But if you look at Google, Google was a unique insight on a search algorithm. Sites that link the sites create a better search algorithm. Facebook was uh, a unique insight on connecting people by email alias. Uh, so these services from just a small insight become larger things. So I think if you ever you know, thinking about creating another you know, service, or what I'm looking at right now is just you know finding those unique insights that may be small at first, but hopefully you can build on top of it to create something more meaningful. Hi. Uh, the last 10 years have seen a significant uh, wealth creation uh, back where you come from. Uh, when you and your fellow successful peers sit across the dinner table, is there any conversation uh, linking what you can make a difference to on the social entrepreneurship side? And are there any insights that you feel uh, need uh, focus on uh, in that perspective to help the wider population? Yes. Well, I guess with, with projects that I'm working on, I, I take a more general approach. Hopefully it's not only a solution I care about, but hopefully empowers people with uh, a solution that allows them to communicate ideas uh, about their experiences, ideas, or causes. Uh, with YouTube, I think it's had that effect. I feel like with Mixbit, hopefully we empower people with tools that makes it more intuitive for people to create better, more interesting content that uh, allows them to more effectively communicate their ideas. So you know, there's not a particular cause or social cause that I'm focused on, but I, I hope by the products that I do create that it does have some type of effect on society. Hi, Chan. Right, here we go. Over here. Oh, yeah, we've got a question from the official uh, Facebook page of the forum. Um, what was your exact moment when you knew that you'd created something that would alter the course of culture forever? Yes. The exact moment. Well, as soon as we created the site, of course, I mean, as soon as I came up with the name, I knew it was going to be a success. No, uh, you can never prepare uh, for the reaction uh, of a service like YouTube. We just had these basic ideas of what would make better videos for food service for ourselves. I, I think when we hit about a million video views a day, we thought we were onto something quite big. Um, and I remember early on as we were plotting our growth to about, we, we thought we'd level off around 30 million views a day. We thought that we would have to build a system that would support that. Uh, but obviously now YouTube today supports billions of video views uh, every single day. But beyond that, I think we saw the impact that was starting to have on the world and talking about picking up the newspaper and seeing references to it, uh, uh, how it's affecting culture or politics, um, or simply being discovered by sharing their talents, uh, you know, the Justin Bieber's of the world uh, being discovered through YouTube. Um, so, for me, I think it was, it's, just, it's just that, to see the reaction uh, within popular culture, and culture in general, and how people react to the site. Good morning, uh, Chad. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, Chad. Welcome to Abu Dhabi. Uh, my name is Ahmed al uh, My first question is about uh, that how, do you, how did you overcome the challenge of content? 
because now I guess uh, a lot of us in this audience when we browse or uh, access YouTube we find something interesting but sometimes things a lot of things do not come to our expectation okay. especially for generations and children and you know these things so this is my first question yes but with YouTube I mean the site took on a life of its own I think we were really just focused on how do we empower people with a personal solution to share these videos that were on their cameras and eventually uh, phones. And really, it, there's still a substantial amount of personal content, but it's turned into a way for professionals to distribute their content as well. So there's this, this blend of a personal, professional content on the site. And with that comes, you know, some ways on how people try to abuse the system. You have to build the systems, the policies. I think it's very important to communicate upfront to the community what your site and service is all about, uh, to set the tone for them and how to use the site correctly. But with any system, you're going to have people that try to take advantage of it and, um, with any system. Uh, but I think even though YouTube's become the largest and was the largest, uh, because we have the community policies in place, because we have the tools in the place, we are able to control that much more effectively than any other video site in the market. It is like a TV. It's like a TV, the normal TV. You can see something for interest. My second question, uh, John, is that uh, sometimes when we uh, enjoy these tools that coming from the States, mostly, um, uh, I realize that uh, sometimes we give up, give up our freedom because we are chased. Because once you are logging to YouTube or Facebook or any of these great tools, you have to give your information, you have to give up your, uh, a lot of your uh, personal information. And so every time you are going to the YouTube, somebody uh, in the, uh, behind the scenes, they know exactly what time and when and where and for each one of us. Yep. And this is, uh, I know it's an issue now in, in, in Europe, in the West. Maybe it's not an issue now here in the Middle East, but time will come that people realize that also some sort of freedom or personal uh, information is given out for, for these tools. Yes. I mean, uh, some of the reasons for giving that inf information up is for personalization, to get better recommendations for the type of content that you'll be shown or exposed on the site. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, a lot of these services or businesses operate on advertising, so that information just helps them more effectively target you with an ad, uh, for better or worse. That's how they're making uh, making their money. Um, with Mixbit, again, my, my different approach on social media and having people collaborate. Right now, Mixbit, there are no identities. Uh, I believe I want to focus more on the content and the individual and hopefully getting people working together. Um, and you can actually participate on Mixbit without even registering for the site. Um, not only viewing, but uploading videos. Um, so, you know, for me, I, I definitely have, have seen, you know, this trend, but hopefully by maybe removing some of, some of that upfront uh, information that we can have more people participating in a more genuine way, I guess how I'm, I'm looking at it. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, Google, Facebook, Twitter, they're all trying to make money with your information. Hello. Hi, Chad. Hi. I'm Fad. Um, I wanted to con congratulate you on YouTube and everything that you've done, but I'm more interested in how you actually started with the idea, because you said you're in design. Yes. And like from a design point, obviously you needed other team members, technical, whatever, and how did you convince them that you had a great idea, and how did you actually start with yes. the idea? Yeah. <clears throat> well, with the team, it was basically myself and my, my business partner, Steve Chen. Um, so I was more of the de designer, he was the engineer. So in terms of coming up with the idea, we did that together, we did that collaboratively. We were talking about different opportunities and video uh, struck, struck a chord where we thought that this would be a, a great, I guess, interesting project to work on. Um, and we started just basically spending time together um, in our homes, online, uh, in garages, of course, because that's how every Silicon Valley site is created. Um, and just on the whiteboard, just talking through things, just just drawing things on the whiteboard, talking to ourselves, seeing if it would work. Um, 
So we kind of focused more on the solution first, and then in the back of my mind, I've continued to think about well, what kind of brand do we want to associate with this solution. Um, and it's always hard to come up with a name that hasn't been registered yet online, so thinking about how we wanted to sort of create a personal video solution, scale the name YouTube, and went with it because it wasn't registered really definitively. Thank you. Strategy, I would like to know uh, uh, what was the strategic decision uh, behind uh, allowing the acquisition by uh, Google, the giant Google. Was it like uh, because of the competition and there was a menace, so therefore you go for the acquisition? Or it was like seeking opportunities in order to grow uh, internationally? Uh, because we see that many uh, very, very important ideas uh, in terms of internship, they died because of the uh, roughness of the competition and because of the acquisition because of the mergers. So what was the strategic decision behind it? Yes. Thank you. And initially, we were definitely concerned about the competition. Even Google had a competing product called Google Video, uh, which we, when that came out, we thought it had no way to survive. But um, we just continued to focus on the community and the product and building the best solution that we can, removing these barriers for people. Um, and eventually, yes, it just becoming the market leader in video, but along the way, we needed more support, we needed more people, more money. Uh, by the time the acquisition came around, we only had 67 people within the company, and uh, really a lot of pressure uh, on ourselves just to keep the system up and running. Um, and we, we were we were threatening not only to traditional media, but to the internet services themselves. They, they, they saw our growth, uh, and yeah, we weren't really that friendly with us. We needed a friend along our journey and take things to the next level. And uh, luckily enough, we, we were able to strike a, a deal with Google that allowed us to take things to the next level. I didn't want to see this opportunity disappear uh, for individuals to have a chance to, to share their thoughts, experiences, and talents with the world. Uh, we really wanted to see that we could live on, uh, not crush under the weight of our own success. And, um, and, and to some extent, yeah, I, I don't believe YouTube would be would would be here today without the support of Google. So they were able to not only support us and allow us to survive, but take everything to the next level. Uh, internationalize the site, localize the site in over 40 different languages, uh, have access to global teams through all, all of their offices. Um, so yeah, so for me, I'm very thankful that they, they came, came along to help us out. And, uh, Part of me staying at Google for so long, I, I only needed to stay there for about a year and a half. I ended up staying for four of us to kind of see things through from the business perspective after they took a chance on us. So, um, so that's why we ended up at Google. I think it's my turn. <laughs> Uh, Jed, I just have a question about are you going back to entrepreneurship. So being one of the leaders in entrepreneurship and starting really a little bit back, uh, and you didn't really face failure being a first comer with YouTube and you get really the great success. So how does how does fear come to you now when you want to start something new, being that famous, that successful? How do you feel starting a new business as an entrepreneur? Well, I do feel like there's been a lot of ideas in my head that I've failed at. I mean, there's just continue to think of ideas and things that you want to work on. You know, with YouTube, this is one that we ended up pursuing, but there's a lot of uh, kind of starting and ending these ideas for a series of months and weeks. Even with our current company, Avo Systems, we've, we've probably worked on about eight different projects right now, half of which have worked out. Uh, we wanted to build a system that would allow us to reuse that code to accelerate future development, future ideas. But uh, but yeah, there's always these you know potential expectations of what's next, I think, for us. Just like letting go of you know being judged when you're creating a company initially. It's the same trying to create something again. Uh, you just have to some extent not care because uh, you, you just need to enjoy what you do at the end of the day. Again, it's not necessarily about the exit or the outcome, it's about the journey, it's about creating and working on something that motivates you to get out of bed every day. Uh, so that's how we're looking at it, and um, hopefully people enjoy what we create at some point. Thank you. Chad? Chad? Yes. Yes, hi, this is Linda at Alarm with Potential. Very quick question on an emotional uh, level. Was there any day when you said, I give up? That's it? And if so, how did you overcome that? 
Um, I don't. I don't think there's any point where we said we were going to give up. Um, I mean, just personally or with, with, with YouTube in particular, I think that uh, there's definitely a lot of challenges and uh, you just need to continue to think through them um, and just react. I, I think uh, you're never going to know the right solution uh, or have the right answer until you try. And, not only from a product perspective, but from a business perspective. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities where you just need to make a decision at the moment. Um, there, were, there were points in time at PayPal where a lot of the payment transaction was coming through eBay, and eBay had shut off PayPal buttons from being placed on the site. Um, but it required some discussions, and they turned that functionality back on. The same thing happened with, with YouTube at the time with MySpace. Uh, we were gaining considerable traction in the community. They were embedding videos on MySpace. And MySpace eventually shut us off. Um, again, with the community, we were too embedded for them to not allow us to exist uh, within their community anymore. So they eventually turned us back on. But there are points you know, throughout both of you know those journeys with, with PayPal and with YouTube were yeah we were at a crossroads where the, we were kind of dependent upon this other network allowing our service to exist. Um, so you just need to to decide what what are you going to do about it. Um, if you know if they wouldn't have turned on the on the, uh, the embeds again in the case with, with YouTube, what what would we have done? I, I'm not sure, but. I think you're going to run. You're going to run into obstacles along the way. It's not, uh, I think, an opportunity to just say you give up, but you just creatively try to figure it out and move forward, um, and continue to try, continue to try to adapt until you get the right solution. Again, in the world of the internet, uh, it allows you that flexibility to con continue to try and try again uh, because it's not a physical product necessarily. Just working a virtual thing that you can continue to change until it makes sense to people. So. I think that's just been our approach. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you. Thank you.